Oh my god, so much watery energy, so much Piscean energy. Overall energy to start us off, we do have the King of Cups. King of Cups is representing a sense of emotional maturity and emotional stability. The thing that you're going to really want to do during this full moon in Pisces is make sure that you have a strong hold or as strong of a hold as you can on your emotions, on your emotional stability. Because for some of us, this could be a pretty big storm. Okay, underneath the King of Cups is the Three of Swords, but then underneath the Three of Swords is the King of Swords and Temperance. Hello, everyone. Come on, why aren't you working? Hi, guys. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So... Happy Tuesday. It is Tuesday, October 19th, and we have a full moon on our hands. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So as I would normally say, please keep in mind that this is a timeless reading. However, I'm going to stop myself there because this, this reading, this session and morning coffee in the future is looking like it's going to be more time sensitive again. Um, and the reason why that's happening is because I am shifting my focus uh, into a much more astrology based focus. And with that, I am um, I'm going to be placing a lot of focus on the moon when it comes to our day-to-day -day experiences. So um, for those of you over on Patreon, you guys are already getting a taste of this. Any of you that might still be thinking about joining Patreon or rejoining Patreon, I would wait a little bit longer um, because I'm still de developing my sense of focus here, all right? And so things are coming together. Things are definitely coming together. Um, but I'm still just trying to figure out how to really put this into place, put my new sense of practice into place and make it sustainable. So give me about another month or so. Um, if you wanna join in November, go right ahead. However, um, things are going to be changing. I, I feel like maybe by December or something, I'll have a better understanding of how I wanna move forward with everything. Okay, so with that said, morning coffee is going to be more time sensitive moving forward because of the focus, my personal focus on the placement of the moon. Now the moon moves through each sign about in about two days or so. So that's going to be a better point of view to give us a, a better understanding of what is actually happening for us, for the collective at any given time. Also keep in mind that I'm still practicing uh, true sidereal astrology, all right? So that's not going to be the same or the placements aren't going to be the same as in mainstream or tropical astrology, okay? Excellent. So with that said, we're going to be talking about this latest full moon that is happening officially. I guess you could say it's happening on the 20th, however, which is tomorrow. However, today is the 19th and um, the actual opposition between the sun and the moon, which creates the phenomena or the visual phenomena for us of a full moon. The actual opposition between the sun and the moon happens, kicks off, starts today around two in the afternoon on the 19th, and then follows through into the 20th, and then we continue, all right? <clears throat> so uh, we're gonna talk, we're gonna have a little bit of a chat about it, and then we're gonna get into the cards. So timestamps can be found in the description box and the pinned comment below. If you maybe wanna skip the story time or discussion, and get straight to the cards, all right? But I highly recommend that you at least tune in for the discussion because that's gonna have a big effect or it's gonna, it's a big part of what's going on here. So, okay. So, this full moon is in Pisces yet again. From a mainstream tropical astrology point of view, it is in Aries. Uh, but we practice or we study uh, sidereal astrology here on Divine Conversations, so the, the moon is in Pisces. And literally, if, if you were to look at any sort of um, uh, astronomy app, you would see that the where the actual placement in the constellations are, or what the actual placement is, the moon is in Pisces. This is the second full moon in a row that we are having that is in Pisces. 
The last one was back in September, at the end of September. And if you guys remember me sp speaking about it, my personal experience with that full moon was extremely emotional. Um, but for me, it was emotional to the point where I was connecting with a higher vibratory version of myself. And I was connecting to the sorrow, the deep sorrow that my soul kind of experiences when it looks at what I, as Eric, the incarnated being that is part of this soul, has been going through over all this time. And it wasn't necessarily what I was going through. It was more the fact that I, in many ways, I allowed it to happen. Most of it was for me to learn. And most of it, or some of it, a good portion of it was not all that necessary for me to go through to learn these certain things, but it is what it is. So at that time, I was able to really clear a lot of the emotions out of the way to get myself focused on this one pointed focus, very three of wands energy to focus on how do I move forward from here? How do I pull myself out of this ditch? How do I pull myself out of this entrenched energy I find myself in? And so now that we've gotten to this next full moon, which is again in Pisces, for me specifically, the feeling, the energy surrounding it is very different. One thing that I want to make very clear for the collective here is you really need to pay attention to your dreams at this time. And not just the dreams that you have at night when you're asleep, but your daydreams also. So for me, with this next, with this current full moon, a lot of the emotional processing has happened. And so there really isn't too much for me to process emotionally other than the fears of what I face in my physical reality in the actual circumstances, but again, but, but those are just fears, right? That's not really what's worthy of being focused on. But with a lot of the emotional cleansing and clearing that I've done up until now, instead of getting wrapped up in all that emotion that Pisces, the energy of Pisces would bring forward, instead it's, for me, it's a focus on my dreams. And yesterday I, well, over the last two days really, Ever since the moon crossed into Pisces, which was around Sunday of this past weekend, um, I've been getting these intuitive flashes, these intuitive hits. Now, you guys know me by now. You know I'm intuitive. You know that I'm, I have a strong intuitive sense and I can really pinpoint a lot of stuff for people that I've never even met before face to face, right? Okay. So that's not so weird or, or strange or, or different. But what is different is that the intuitive hits that I'm getting are directly, or at least seem to be, directly related to where I want to be going in life. Very future forward focus. And that's what I feel like this, this full moon is bringing us the opportunity to cultivate. This future forward focus. And for those of you that are over on Patreon, we did discuss this a little bit um, in today's transit report. So check that out. Um, but I've been able to allow, but, but I've been clear enough to allow the moon being in Pisces, which is a very collective focus, is a very oneness, unity focused energy. I've been able to allow these intuitive flashes, feelings, feelings are very important, but then also the visions that come with those feelings of where it is I see myself in the future. And as that realization came to mind yesterday, one of the big messages that I got for the collective was pay very close attention to your dreams, what your intuitive hits are, whether good or bad, okay? Don't allow yourself to get lost in fear, but whether good or bad, it's because this, what, what Spirit is saying is this is your intuition telling you, letting you know what your current momentum, what your current trajectory, what you are currently working on, what you are currently cultivating, these intuitive hits are showing you where you are going towards, okay? Ultimately, in the long run, what this could turn out to be or where you could turn out to be. So if these intuitive hits that are coming to you are flashes of your future and you don't like it, then start to figure out why. Start to figure out what it is is going on in your life, what, you're in, what you are physically, actively engaging yourself in that could ultimately be leading you to this destination that your intuition is bringing up for you right now. If you do like it, like for myself, it's very much in alignment with myself, 
who I've grown to be, who I've come to understand myself as at this point in my journey. What I'm getting is very much like, yes, I want to end up there. Perfect, says spirit, perfect. Let's go through the process of getting there, okay? Um, let's see, is there anything else that I wanna start with? Oh, there was one last thing that I wanted to say, um, just for further clarification. I have been able to really release a lot of the pain, a lot of the torture, a lot of the old. And full moons are a perfect time for you to really release, okay? So what I'm hearing for the collective is that your intentions are pretty much already set. Again, whether good or bad, okay? And for some of us, those intentions have gotten set into motion because of the actions we've been taking up until this point, all right? So, um, oh, where was I going with that? Oh man, I totally lost it. Oh, so a full moon. So use the full moon to release, right? So if you are getting intuitive hits that are leading you in a certain direction and you wanna keep going there, set the intention to release anything and everything that stands in the way of you getting there. If the intuitive hits that you are getting are not where you wanna end up, then really focus on let, allowing yourself to release what is what you're holding on to, what you've been working on, what you've been involved with that are leading you down this path, okay? And then allow the nurturing and flowing and watery energies of Pisces to wash that away for you. Anything that stands in the way or anything you no longer want to be involved with, okay? Beautiful. Let's move forward. Mm. No, one last thing. What's really helping you with this release at this time is the trine between the sun and Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is associated with Piscean. No, well, no, not really. Uh, Jupiter is actually the ruler of Sagittarius. But the grace and the benevolence and the desire that the d desire to expand and the desire to connect with your soul and all that stuff that comes with Jupiter, comes from Jupiter, is helping you in this time. So whatever is going on with Pisces, with the moon being in Pisces right now, which is a fairly benevolent energy, and it's an energy connected to, uh, uh, associated with oneness and unity, right? Jupiter is helping you get there with this trine between Jupiter and the sun. So whatever is going on in Pisces, whatever is being... Uh, dug up or you know worked up with the moon being in pisces allow the trine between the sun and jupiter to help you with this expansion to help you gain momentum to help you move forward to help you understand deeper elements of your soul what your soul is calling you towards or what your soul is bogged down by allow the expansiveness of jupiter to expand all of this for you so that you have a better view of it so that you can work more towards it as you move forward yes excellent let's get into the cards now and let's see what the cards have to say or what spirit has to say for the collective at this time here we go hi spirit please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of the situations, situationships, romances, relationships, and places in which we all need it the most. And also a special request, if you could give us, please give us general gui guidance for the highest good of all in terms of the full moon in Pisces between the 19th and the 20th of October, 2021, we would all greatly appreciate it. Thank you so very much, Spirit. I don't know if you guys heard that loud scratching noise, but my landlord is up. Okay. He's fantastic. He's such a bright, beautiful soul. It's like 
I'm so blessed to be graced with his presence. All right, guys, let's get into this. I'm going to give this five shuffles here. This is one. This is two. This is three. Hey, um, this is four. I'm wanting to, to mention this because I'm super excited about it. But this coming Sunday, what's the date? I, maybe around the 23rd or the 24th of October. This is five. Um, there is going to be a session published on Mystic Unicorn, my second channel. Link can be found below. Um, talking about Venus's transit through Sagittarius and the Venus retrograde. All right. I'm really super excited about that. I'm excited to share it with the collective. I'm excited to share it with you guys. So keep that on your radar. If you're not aware of Mystic Unicorn yet, check it out. Link can be found in the description box below and the pinned comment. Um, Mystic Unicorn is where I focus on love and relationships, interpersonal relationships. And because of that, I am placing a heavy focus on the transits of Venus on that channel. And I've produced a video that talks about the, the transit of Venus and her retrograde through Sagittarius that lasts from March, I'm sorry, from November 2nd of 2021 to March 6th of 2022. The full transit, including a few weeks of Venus's retrograde. Really super excited for to, to share that with the collective. Mark your calendars there. It's this coming weekend. I think it's like the 24th or the 25th, something like that. Somewhere between the 23rd and the 25th of October. Um, Actually, it might be the 24th. Anyway, uh, yeah, but there's no tarot involved with that reading or that session. It's all just a discussion about the transits and the astrology surrounding it. Um, but there's a ton of readings over there with, that are just tarot anyway. So there's plenty of information and there's more readings to come. But I just wanted to put that on your radar, guys. It's a really cool session. I'm very excited about it. Okay. Let's get into this, kids. So what messages do you have for the collective, please, Spirit, in terms of this full moon in Pisces for October 2021? Beautiful. Oh, I love that. Straight Piscean energy coming. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. So much watery energy. So much Piscean energy, okay? Um, overall energy to start us off, we do have the King of Cups. The King of Cups is representing Pisces here, okay? Officially, the King of Cups would represent uh, Scorpio specifically, but the court cards can represent any any of the signs within that element, okay? We're talking about water here, so this would be Pisces. But um, there is a transformative aspect that uh, the King of Cups is representing here, that, that the, 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 the Scorpionic element, the transformative element. But also the King of Cups is representing a sense of emotional maturity and emotional stability. The thing that you're going to really want to do during this full moon in Pisces is make sure that you have a strong hold or as strong of a hold as you can um, on your emotions, on your emotional stability. Because for some of us, this could be a pretty big storm. Okay, underneath the King of Cups is the Three of Swords. But then underneath the Three of Swords is the King of Swords and Temperance. Okay followed by the eight of cups. So you're walking, so, so you have the opportunity during this full moon in Pisces to really get a deeper understanding of what it is that you are feeling and what could be hindering you or holding you back on an emotional level. You guys, your emotions are so important, okay? If you don't have this clear, calm energy, this energy of being able to be in the eye of the storm that the, that, uh, the king of cups represents, then your emotions are just going to throw you all over the place and you're really not going to be able to handle anything. And that's what's been going on for me for the last year. I'm going to be completely honest. For the last year, I've been wrapped up in the emotions of everything. Not only the emotions of everything that has happened for me on a personal level while I've been here in Puerto Rico, but also just as a whole, as a whole of my life. The last full moon that we had in September that was in Pisces was me getting to the bottom of that, re -meet, me reaching the soul level of the sorrow and the despair and the pain that I've been experiencing. But I got a hold of it, King of Cups. And that allowed me to see, see clearly through the heartbreak and bring greater balance into my life, okay? That effectively allowed me to walk away from things that no longer serve me on an emotional level, which is very important, and, 
end that cycle, end that lesson, Ten of Pentacles and the world. So you could see this full moon, this current full moon in October in Pisces as a gateway, okay? An emotionally clearing gateway so that you can end the old, complete the lesson and start to transition into the next cycle. Knight of Pentacles is underneath the world with the Nine of Pentacles and the Nine of Cups, okay? Self-sufficiency and a sense of self-happiness, I guess, for lack of a better term, okay? But let's get into what has actually come out on the table here. Again, so much... Po wait, wait, this is backwards. Uh-oh. Oh, I screwed this up. No, I didn't. Oh, there we go. Okay, wait, shit. Sorry, guys. Okay, so um, lots of Piscean energy here. Makes sense. A lot of watery energy. But the very first card that came out here, you guys, is the Ace of Cups. Self-love. But self-love, uh, unconditional love, divine love, okay? This is love from the collective. This is one, this is love from source. Right after that came the Ten of Cups, which can be seen as 12th house energy, Piscean energy. This is the energy of the collective. This is the energy of the collective emotional well-being. We are receiving love and divine support straight from the divine here, straight from the collective. And what I'm feeling here is that the collective of source, the collective of everything, right? The collective, okay, is encouraging you to love yourself as much as it loves you. And for some of us, that means letting go of walking away from things that no longer serve us. Things that you may have been doing for the collective or on behalf of the collective or a collective of people that really aren't serving you. Now, now is the time for you to really accept the unconditional love coming from the divine to allow yourself to separate, okay? One last card that's come out here. It is face down. More water, the two of cups. The divine loves you. Source loves you, okay? The two of cups can be seen as a relationship between you and someone else. Okay, but it also can be seen as a relationship with between yourself, between you and yourself, the masculine and feminine within you, your masculine, feminine and inner child. Okay, um, that's more of a three of cups energy. But anyway, um, this also represents your relationship with source and source is coming in to love you. To love you on behalf of who you actually truly are in terms of the collective. You don't have to sacrifice any of your sense of self or your sense of well-being to be there for the collective. And that's where this emotional maturity is coming in of the King of Cups. Things that hurt you don't, ha don't really serve you for that long. Orion. What's up, baby boy? Oh, yeah? Really? Wow. So, oh, well, okay. I'll come out in a few minutes. I gotta finish working, though. You are wet. Why are you so wet, cat? What have you been getting into? That's a wet pussy right there. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. Okay, anyway. <laughs> okay, uh, where were we? Um, love yourself enough to allow you to let go of things is basically what I want to say there, okay? Spirit is saying let's get into some clarification. Excellent. Five shuffles here. One. Two. Three. Four. Alrighty, kids, we're going to start with the Ace of Cups, yeah? Let's get some clarity on the Ace of Cups. What's the Ace of Cups for the collective, please, Spirit? The Knight of Wands. Yeah, and this is actually something that I, that came out in, um, in the, in the discussion we had about this, about today's energies and about this full moon over on Patreon. But the Ace of Cups is clarified by the Knight of Wands. And something that, that came through is that many of us 
are activated. We know exactly what direction we want to be moving in, or at least we've been getting the intuitive hits to get us focused on moving in that direction. Okay, so allow this to happen for yourself. The Ace of Cups is the divine coming forward and bringing you a sense of wish fulfillment, self-love, unconditional love, to nurture you into moving forward, driving forward towards what it is you feel inspired towards. I understand that water and fire don't mix. Water puts out fire. But water is representing the nurturing element to give you the feelings of unconditional love and support to get you motivated to move forward. At the bottom of the deck, you have the Empress. More unconditional love, okay? More nurturing energy. This is all, but really, this full moon in Pisces, the message in the, of this full moon here from the divine is love yourself as much as we love you. We want you to succeed. We want you to be successful. We want you to have this flowing and healthy and beneficial connection to abundance that we constantly provide to you. The, the, your abundance never really gets cut off. Certain circumstances in your life may restrict that flow of abundance for any given reason at, at a certain point, but you are never not connected. You, your connection to the abundance of the universe and your God-given right to abundance never really ends, never really goes away. So take those moments where you feel your connection dwindling a little bit or your abundance dwindling a little bit. Allow that to teach you. Allow that to shape you. Allow that to mold you. Allow that to give you character or provide you with a stronger sense of character, but never allow it to convince you that you're not connected, that your abundance is not flowing. All right? Keep going. Nine of Wands, Knight of Pentacles. Eventually, you will get here, King of Pentacles, all right? This is also an energy that came out in the Patreon discussion. Um, our sense of stability, our sense of financial security, financial abundance is shifting for a lot of us, all right, at this time. Okay, beautiful. Let's move forward here. Oh, wait, no, that stays there. Let's now talk about the Ten of Cups. What's the Ten of Cups for the collective? Huh? <laughs> the Empress wants to come out, so we're going to keep that there. What's the Ten of Cups for the collective? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Ten of Swords is at the bottom of the deck. So the, so the collective of source is really wanting you to persevere and stay connected to the unconditional love that it's flowing towards us here with this you have the six of cups the two of cups and then the six of pentacles this kind of feels like a review process this feels like us going back in the past and understanding elements of the past so that we can have a better and deeper relationship with ourselves and to then cultivate a greater sense of balance of give and take both monetarily physically and emotionally okay so i mean the, the message is pretty much still the same although the two of cups is here twice so i want to definitely clarify the two of cups officially but the the, the message of the ten of cups is pretty much the same as the Ace of Cups, okay? And that, that's what I was feeling in the beginning, all right? So there's that. But uh, with the Ten of Swords here, Hierophant underneath the deck, it's about what you've learned, all right? Hierophant represents, in my opinion, as a reader, the Hierophant represents Saturnian energy. And Saturn is direct, Jupiter is direct, Mercury is direct, okay? So what have you learned? And how can you bring tough and uh, painful situations to a close, right? Excellent. Last thing, Two of Cups. What's the Two of Cups here for the collective? Seeking knowledge, but whoa, learning and understanding. Maybe even going in a crusade, on a crusade. King of Wands. Ooh, all right. So what is the Two of Cups? The Two of Cups is representing your bond with yourself. Also, your relationship with Source, your relationship with the Divine. And this is clarified by the eight, the Page of Swords to the Knight of Swords. So, And then the, the, the King of Wands is at the bottom of the deck. So um, <laughs> this is feeling like a very passionate defense of oneself. This is feeling like some people coming to a realization of certain things and it triggering them. It like 
yo, popping off Knight of Swords. Be careful. The Knight of Swords is representing a very aggressive energy, but what it's feeling like here is it's representing an aggressive energy to defend the self, to defend your right to be happy. The Nine of Cups has also come out. The Nine of Cups fell out on the pile that is the Ace of Cups and the Ten of Cups. So the Ace to the Nine brings you to the Ten, right? But for some of us, this is a stark realization of how we've been hurt, how we've been deceived, all that stuff, and aggressively now fighting for our, our own personal sense of happiness. And that's coming with a great sense of confidence, great deal of confidence. So be careful, okay? Yes, Mercury is direct, but also the Sun and the Moon are, con I'm sorry, the Sun and Mars are conjunct in Virgo, all right? The Sun and Mars conjunction can really blur the lines between your soul, uh, your inner self, and your ego, okay? And with some of the realizations that could be coming here, in terms of, your, of strengthening the bond between yourself, some of the realizations here can really <sighs> rile some people up, we'll say. It's not necessary to go to extremes. Instead of taking this strength of will and this self-confidence and using it to hurt other people or get back at other people, instead use it to aggressively drive yourself to a sense of justice, to a sense of stability and financial stability, okay? For yourself, not for anyone else, for yourself. Excellent. I got to pause for a second. Alrighty, guys. So let's close this out. Um, I want to get some closing Oracle guidance. I'm being called to go with the Lightworker Oracle for our official closing message. But I'm also wanting to, since we're talking about this full moon, I want to get some messages from the Moonology Oracle. Okay. So let's get some closing messages here. I'm going to give this three shuffles. This is one. Fine. Five shuffles. This is two. Three. Oh, three. Four. And five. Alrighty, kids. So, messages from the Moonology Oracle. Yeah, in terms of this full moon in Pisces for October 2021. Yes! Yes! And this is the perfect card for this Piscean energy. And I'm just going to take this one. That's it. Blue moon. Believe in the impossible. So there may be some things that are coming up in your life or some intuitive hits that you're getting, uh, visions of the future that may seem wildly, wildly uh, impossible. But that's the energy of Pisces, okay? Anything can happen with Pisces, literally. You are directly, or at least the closest, in terms of the zodiac, when you get to Pisces or the 12th house, you are the closest to God's source creator. Some even consider the 12th house, which is ruled by Pisces, as the house of God, okay? So when it comes to that, anything can happen. Believe in miracles. Pray for miracles if you need one. Believe in the impossible, you guys, all right? Um, let's see. I do. Let's read from the book a little bit. I rarely do this, but I want to, from this deck at least, but I want to read from the book. And then we'll get our closing message from the Lightworker Oracle. All right, so Blue Moon says... As the saying goes, some things happen only, quote, once in a blue moon, end quote. In other words, hardly ever. Drawing this card suggests you are about to get a rare chance and that some, something, quote, one off, unquote, could well be about to happen. This card is a very positive sign if you felt like you're hoping too much or, at, I'm sorry, hoping for too much or asking too much of the universe. Whatever you are asking about, well, it might only happen once in a blue moon, but it can happen. However, it, with this rare opportunity before you, 
it is impossible it is important excuse me it's important that you believe in it if you convince yourself that whatever you're asking about can never go in your favor then guess what it won't go in your favor be grateful for this card which is a reminder to believe in your dreams believe in it okay if you're getting the dreams if it's coming if it's just coming in to you seemingly out of the blue out of nowhere it's not it's coming from source it's coming from your higher self it's coming from a future version of yourself that has already where you see it again if you don't want that to happen if you don't want to end up there fix it change it now if you do want to end up there just follow through and believe in it okay excellent last card five shuffles one two three four and five all right kids closing the oracle message yes here we go. Last message, please, Spirit, to close out this reading for this full moon in Pisces, October 2021. Ooh. Oh, okay. Card number 39. Divine talents. Ooh. Now, three and nine boil down to 12. Three plus nine make 12. And then that, in numerology, that would be boiled down to three. But three plus nine is 12. 12th house, Piscean energy. Okay, cool. Let's read this. Divine Talents. You are a talented soul. Over many lifetimes, you have developed your spiritual abilities to channel higher awareness, attract healing energy, and radiate light to uplift the consciousness of those around you. Your divine talents are many and uniquely expressed through you. Your talents do not have to resemble those of another to have their own inestimable, in, inestimable value. Do not be afraid to use them. Okay, there's more of that unconditional love, divine love energy coming through saying, trust yourself, believe in yourself, do your, do, do your things. Do all of your things, yes? Excellent. I love you guys. I hope this was helpful for you. I'm going to leave it there. Um, enjoy. This full moon, I hope you do get a, joy, a chance to enjoy it as much as you can, yeah? I'm sending you all so much love, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>